Hi guys, welcome back. Sorry it's been so long since we've uploaded any content, but today I'm gonna to make that up to you by giving you an inside look at our 2016 Isuzu NPR box truck. Before we get into that, please take a moment to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and let's get into it. So the first thing you'll notice about this truck, and let me clarify, I probably would not be interested in this setup if it didn't have a lift gate. It's crucial to getting in and out of the truck. So if you're looking or thinking about getting a setup like this, do not exclude the lift gate. You'll regret it later. So the first thing you'll notice when you get into this box truck is everything was built using steel and everything is off the ground because we wanted something that was durable, resistant to elements, and could be removed if need be to go into a different truck if we get one down the road. So all these racks you see here will hold 16 foot material. This is an 18 foot box truck, by the way. We do keep a lot of material up there when we have to, it's nice to have. And the storage down below this lower shelf here is actually for plywood and we can fit an eight foot piece of plywood roughly goes to about here somewhere. Um, I think we can fit 20, five sheets in there, uh, which is plenty. Um, we have this really cool perch mount, uh, which we bought from Perch Tools, and it allows us to hang our nail guns for accessibility. And also you can hang any M18 Milwaukee tools via their battery mount um, upside down here. Next on this same rack, we have a couple of shop vacs. This is where we store them but we also use them for dust collection on this uh, 12 inch Milwaukee sliding compound miter saw. You'll see we have two Milwaukee workbenches. We customize the top to add T-track and uh, measuring tape or steel roll. Um, and we also use that in combination with a stop block, which we made for repeatable, accurate cutting in the truck. Underneath, the miter saw, you'll see our M18 table saw and stand. And I think that's about it on this. Oh, we also have an iPad mount up here. People ask us all the time what this is for. Why do we have an iPad? Primarily, we use it for streaming music to our radio, which is over there. Um, using a uh, fractional calculator, looking at blueprints, uh, and also using the one key app, which we heavily use to inventory all this stuff. So we'll start at the toolboxes and we'll work our way around this truck. So in the toolbox, everything is labeled using a label maker. So this is PPE, um, safety glasses, earplugs, respirators, gloves, you name it is in here. Um, this is where we keep a lot of paper documentation on our job sites, whether it be permit information or specification sheets or drawings or whatever, it all pretty much stays in here. This is our miscellaneous clamp drawer, just a couple of uh, ratchet clamps, 90 degree uh, miter clamps, pipe clamps. Below that, we have a hand cut drawer. Inside the hand cut drawer, you see a couple of hand planes, uh, trend sharpening system, a set of Stanley Sweetheart chisels, some Japanese saws, card scrapers, hand saws, drywall saws, files, all kinds of stuff in there. Below that, we have a bunch of hammers from small sledges, framing hammers, uh, soft blow hammers, rubber mallets. We also have a bunch of punches and things like that. Beneath that drawer, we have a cleaning drawer, trash bags, sponges, rags. It's a little depleted right now because we just finished up a project. Um, Milwaukee M18 blower. Moving back up to the right side of this toolbox, we have our measuring drawer, which has everything needed to accurately measure for our job sites, including scribes and chalk lines and awls and measuring tapes, moisture meters, laser. We don't have the M18 laser yet. Hoping to get that. 
Um, the great thing about these toolboxes, I'll just pause real quick. The great thing about these toolboxes is that since this vehicle is mobile, we just simply lock these up and everything here is tied down as you see it every day. We can just pick up and drive this thing and nothing will fall or move or roll around, which is awesome. Uh, moving down from that drawer, we have screwdriver drawer, which has every screwdriver that Milwaukee makes that I know of, along with some picks and hooks and some other stuff. Below that, we have plier and wrench drawer. Once again, almost entirely Milwaukee with a couple of exceptions here. Below that, we have our razor drawer, which has utility knives and scissors, razor blades. Actually, a lot of this is in our shop right now too. Below that, we have our pry bar drawer, inflatable shims, pry bars, scrapers, uh, you name it. Below that, glue and tape. This is a little disastrous right now, but there's a little bit of everything in here as far as tape goes. Wood glue, PVC cement, epoxies, CA glues, uh, double-sided tape, all kinds of stuff. Moving to the right from there, we have a second toolbox. And this one here, we use just as much, really. I mean, we're in and out of all this stuff all the time, but miscellaneous hardware, we have a bunch of stuff in here, nuts and bolts, concrete nails, Craig uh, pocket hole jig, small ram set, miscellaneous punch list stuff, M18 flashlight, I don't even know why that's in there. To the right of there, another miscellaneous hardware drawer, structural screws, bolts, our anchors, um, tap cons, sheet metal screws, washers, nuts, zip ties, and so on. Over here, this is kind of our overflow bulk area. In this drawer, we keep a bunch of uh, bulky items, big boxes of screws and nails, wood glue, any other kind of chemical that um, we keep in there. So from there, we have a drawer of saw blades. We keep a pretty good inventory of blades. It sucks to have to run to the store to get a new blade. So we keep them on hand, multi-tool blades, 12 inch saw, 10 inch saw, so on. Below that we have our bits. Most of our um, extra, I would call, say extra bits are in here. Drill bits, unibits, Forstner bits, long oddball drill bits, hole saws, some of our hole saws. Below that we just have a little drawer where we store our iPads. Below that is a tool parts drawer. This thing is super handy if you don't have one of these. It's like a mobile drill press made from, by Milescraft. Awesome. Um, so in here we keep some vacuum parts, some spare bags, some bags for our big dust collector, some spare parts to our Atlas 45 tool vest. Moving on from there, we have a Dremel drawer. There's not much in here, but honestly, we rarely use this thing, but it's nice to have when you need it. Straps and tie downs, just miscellaneous stuff, cord management, extra locks and straps and bungee straps. Below that, we have a charger um, drawer, and I believe this is just a bunch of wire and cords and USB cords in there. These are for our um, little power supplies for our heated gear. Below that, some paint brushes, just for miscellaneous touch-up work on job sites, punch list or warranty. And below that, we have our branding drawer, which is full of hats in case someone wants one on site, uh, our label maker, and some other stuff. All right, so from there, I'll point out that up top here, we have a bunch of Milwaukee packout crates. We usually keep on hand well, what we keep on hand depends on what phase we are in a project. So if we're in a foundation phase, we may keep uh, rebar ties and, you know, who knows. When we're in framing stage, half of those will probably be filled with just framing hardware and fasteners. Um, there's hard hats here. That's empty at the moment. That's empty at the moment. And then we keep a bunch of cleaning supplies and paint touch-up chemicals in there. Towards the end of a project, when we're punching out, who knows what will be in there. Mostly paint and stains and you know cleaners and whatnot. 
Up top, you'll also see a tap and die set. Once again, that's only in here depending on what phase we are in a project. If we're doing steel work or punch list, that's generally in here. Behind those two crates, you'll see the backpack attachments for those two Milwaukee um, vacuums I showed earlier. And in the left side here, this is a little tight, sorry. I'm gonna open both of these up. So these doors stay locked all the time. So if anyone ever breaks into this, they'll have to break in a second and a third time to get into the actual tools, um, which is nice. Gives me a little bit of peace of mind. So these doors are all welded wire mesh. There's a magnetic latch on this side and that's how it opens. So let's start at the top. We have hole saw kit, the pack out hole saw kit. We have one pack out full of finish nails. And once again, everything's labeled. Below that, we have a pack out full of Craig screws. And below that, we have the pack out socket set, which is awesome, by the way. I don't care what anybody says about Milwaukee not making good hand tools. I think that's a complete lie. All of this pack out in this entire uh, security cage here, everything is mounted on actual pack out mounts, which is pretty nice. Um, when I first did this, they had just come out with them. So just went ahead and bought a bunch of them. So below that, you'll see a pack out. There's a couple of these in this truck, but this is, uh, these tools we use a lot. This is our typical setup for our install drivers, which we did a video for before. And these side compartments, we keep miscellaneous bits and whatnot. And every, pretty much every drill pack out we have has a full set of bits in it. So this one just happens to be my installation driver here. Below that we have our jigsaw and impact pack out. We don't really use these two tools very much. I mean, we do depending on what phase of a project we're in, but um, they're nice to keep handy. So we keep those together, even though they're not related. Below that we have our nail and staple pack out. And inside of here, you'll find pretty much every, let's see. We have an M12 stapler, um, M18 brad nail gun, a second M18 brad nail gun, and an M18 staple gun. And, and while I'm, I have this out, I'll just show you real quick how this works over here. This perch mount, super handy. We keep these when we're using them generally like this. And if we're gonna go on the road, they are safe to mount like this. They will not come off. Um, no promises, they haven't come off for us. <laughs> so that's how we keep those uh, while in transit. If we don't wanna spend the time to pack up this whole truck back to its original condition here. So that's that. All these guns fit in there pretty good. And actually, if you look over here, this uh, section of steel, we're gonna do the same thing with a secondary mount from Perch Tools eventually. Below that, I'm not gonna get this out because it's heavy as hell, but we have one pack out dedicated to nothing but framing nails and one pack out full of framing nailers. I think we have two in there with the extended magazines. Moving to the right and back up again, we have more pack out organizers with screws, more screws. We have an M18 router pack out, which is pretty simple. It's pretty uh, light box here, but just some common router bits, a little uh, trim router and all the accessories to it.
Down from that, we have our drill and impact pack out. Once again, with all the bits, um, we use that a lot. Down from that, we have our SDS. I believe this is the inch and nine sixteenths. Um, let's see. Yeah, inch and nine sixteenths. We just actually upgraded this. We had the corded version. It was awesome. This is probably even better, I would imagine. So we keep that in there. Down from that, we have our miscellaneous power tool pack out. And inside of there, I don't really know what's in there. The new M18 fuel oscillating tool. And if you haven't gotten this yet and you have the old version, get it. This thing's awesome. We have a Sawzall M18 heat gun and a caulk gun. I kind of have some mixed feelings about the caulk gun, to be honest with you. It's a love hate relationship. Below that, actually this one is not labeled. I think this is our empty. Oh, well, it looks like it used to be empty, but someone left some stuff in there. We have some wipe on poly and some spilled uh, mineral spirits that smells like. Clean that out later. Oops. Moving on. Oh, let me put this back. On this side, we have a pack out organizer filled with 18 gauge nails. We use this in the trim phase of a project. This is our go-to, it's on hand at all times. Uh, another pack out organizer full of crown staples of all different sizes. And let me just show you real quick, cause I don't think I got into this before, but inside of each one of these pack outs, we, we took the time to label everything. Um, that way we know what what we have, what's in the organized bin, and what we're running low on. So, below that, this is just another um, installation driver kit. This is for one of our other employees. M18 radio, awesome, by the way. Uh, our sanding pack out, I'll show you this one. So in here we keep all kinds of stuff, a bunch of sandpaper, uh, sanding disc for the oscillating tool, which is a great tool to sand with, sanding blocks, sanding sticks, belts, foam sanding pads, um, you name it, and a couple of M18 sanders. Below that we have our grinding pack out, which is set up similar. These actually, we had this set up a different way, um, but we just changed this. And actually I found these little bins at Walmart for like 97 cents a piece. So I grabbed a couple and it worked out great. So flap disc, power carving disc, um, handles for the grinder, high speed sanding disc. What else is in here? Um, yeah, M18 grinder, M12 right angle die grinder, bunch of cutoff disc, and that's pretty much it in there. And below that, we have our circular saw pack out. Uh, we have the M18 fuel, I think this is, what is a seven and a half? This thing's pretty awesome, lightweight use the hell out of that. And then we have the beast down here, which we've used considerably to the uh, seven and a quarter rear handle. This thing is bad if you do any kind of uh, framing work or even work with plywood and stuff on site. This thing's a beast.
So moving on from there, we have our battery storage and security set up here in our charging station. So on this truck, there's actually four cameras, security cameras that go to a DVR, which is in here, uh, and it runs on battery power and a battery backup also. We have a bank of rapid chargers and we have two superchargers followed by our M12 batteries, which that's not all of them, but that's the ones we keep on hand. And these are some really cool 3D printed mounts I bought on Amazon or eBay. They're pretty cheap and they're really nice actually. Moving on, we have the top two rows here. Oh, I should mention these. Let me see if I can clear one off here. So these mounts here are super, super nice. I would recommend these to anybody. These are not 3D printed, they're injection molded. I believe the company is 48 Tools and uh, toolfreaks.com is where I got these. So the, the first two rows here, we have all of our 3.0 batteries. Then we have a bank of 5.0 batteries, 8.0, 9.0, looks like there's a 12 there and 12.0. Um, we use all of these. I mean, these are good for finish, uh, Brad nail guns and staplers. And these are good for pretty much anything. And the, the eight and the nines and the twelves are when you need to do some more serious work. Um, so that's pretty much it. And the security cage now onto the right side wall of this truck, we have a clamp rack, which is full of Bessie clamps, which are awesome. Uh, if you're in the market for clamps. From there, we put some E-Track up and we wanted to keep everything as nicely uh, organized and readily available in here, but we also didn't want to um, take much space out of our work area here because we do work in here quite a bit. So we have the fuel chainsaw, fuel leaf blower, which we use a ton, mainly for cleanup work on our job sites. We have three of the regular red stick levels. Then we have all three, or I'm sorry, maybe they make four, but we have all of the Milwaukee digital red stick levels, two rocket lights. And then we have eight hooks here for hanging tool belts, tool vests, hats, VR headsets, whatever we have in here at the time. Fire extinguisher, of course, and a pack out, um, first aid kit, which we use quite a bit. <laughs> All right, now I'll get into some of the upgrades we plan on doing in this truck. Uh, one is we want to add more lighting and we want to make the lighting run off of M18 batteries for now, or at least have that option. The second major upgrade we want to do is we're actually going to add an array of solar panels on the roof of this truck and a bank of batteries below, which will be in steel toolboxes below the truck which will be super handy for us having the ability to work and charge our batteries completely off grid. So that's it guys. Uh, please let me know what you think. Feel free to ask us any questions in the comment section below and we'll see you on the next video.